Hi, my name's Paul. Um, I'm just actually going to swap timer as well. I just forgot about that. Um, so it's 20.36. Okay, cool. So I'm going to give a talk today about a ORM called Objection.js. And for those of you who were here last month, hello, it's me again. <laughs> so um, Node.js has plenty of ORMs. Um, SQLize is one that comes to mind. Obviously, if you're using MongoDB, you're using Mongoose. Um, and so, you know, why consider another? Um, Sometimes a fresh take on an existing challenge can offer something better. Um, and so for your consideration, I would like to suggest Objection.js. Uh, you can find it at vincit forward slash Objection.js at GitHub. Um, so some of the things that it has as an ORM, it lets you create models uh, for tables with ES6 classes and define relationships between them. Uh, you can make queries with nodes async await style, which is really nice. Uh, you can add validation to your models using JSON schema. You can do eager loading, transactions with your models. You can work with nested documents in rows if you're using Postgres. Uh, it's got a HStore feature. Um, you can do graph inserts and updates. Um, I'll show you a graph inserts later on. And you can do some more stuff. Um, but let's get cracking. OK, so the way you install it is you've got to install two dependencies. You've got to install Next and Objection. So Next.js, I think it's called Next. But it could be called Connects, I don't know. Um, basically is a really old school battle-hardened uh, SQL builder that's used in a whole bunch of different RMs. Um, so rather than reinvent the wheel, our objection said we're going to use Next. Um, you can also use it to do database connections, pooling connections, and managing database schemas through database migrations. Um, you'll also need to install a database driver as well for whatever SQL database you want to use. Um, and those are some various options. Um, so I'll kick off with looking at a little bit what Next does in terms of managing database schemas. So um, migrations are a really good pattern for being able to manage a database's schema over time. As you introduce new features and as you sort of realize that the first initial attempt at a database schema had some changes that needed to be made later on, you've got to evolve the database schema. So this is able to do that um, straight away. And so if you just kick off a uh, little script, create a database, um, what it has is two ideas of applying migrations up uh, rolling them back, you apply them down. Um, and so the good thing of using this approach is that actually you can keep the version of your database schema alongside your source code in Git. So you've actually got an idea of exactly what the database schema was like at a particular Git commit in your project's history. Um, and Objection uses Next's built-in support. So I'll just quickly show you what that looks like. Um, so you can just run npx next, migrate make, create tasks table, uh, what it will go off and do is it will actually go and create a migration um, in the migrations folder. Um, you'll then have a file in there with that name that you supplied. And then from there, you can um, see a timestamp in there. So you can organize migrations in chronological time order rather than just using a integer count. If you've got loads of developers working on a project at the same time, you don't want to use that pattern. You want to use timestamps and that's what it does. Um, what it shows you in the file is a little bit something like this. Um, and what you can do is you can just plop in someone here that just creates a table straight away. Um, so we're going to create a tasks table. So we're creating a task tool. Um, you can say, let's have an incrementing ID field that's our primary key. Let's have a string field for the name, uh, the dates, the due by. We're going to have a Boolean flag, uh, default it to false straight away, add some timestamps, and keep a unique index on the name. And then the down one is just literally, let's drop the table um, unless it exists already, um, or if it doesn't. And so you've got those two existing, and you've got one that creates, one that drops down, so it's a reverse of your up. And then if you want to run them, you run it, you get your migration run, you'll, start, you'll see a task table straight away, you want to roll it back, um, and then you'll see it's gone. And it's actually really good practice to just do this locally often so that you can just double check that everything works exactly as you expect. Uh, so that when you do it in production, um, it's less daunting, it's just something you've done many times before. Uh, some models. Some models are wrappers around the database tables. Um, they help you to encapsulate the business logic that you have within those tables. Um, and you can create them with ES classes. So good example here, really nice and simple. Um, we have, you basically get the model from objection. Uh, you've got a database connection. You pass it in and you tell model to link that through next. And then you've got this task class extends model. All you've got to do from the start is just tell it what table in the database that model links to, and that's it. Uh, and then export your object. 
Um, from there, you can start to do some nice queries. So if you just want to select everything in the task table, that's all you've got to do. Uh, it's just nice, clean, simple. Um, again, same for if you want to do a more typical select query, you just start to do a little bit of chaining logic. Um, and then that's really nice, simple again. Uh, if you want to do an insert, well, that's all you've got to do. Um, and if you want to delete or do an update in this case, um, you just call patch instead of swing like update. And then if you want to delete it, you can do it just like that. Uh, in terms of relationships, um, objection address provides a way to define relationships between models that's really powerful and flexible. Um, and then relationships allow you to do other things like do eager loading and support objection addresses, GraphQL plugin. Uh, so here's an example. So say you've got a task table and you've got a task joins table and a task can have many dependencies and a task can have many dependents and actually it's just a sort of self-referential join table. Um, what we could have here is, for example, we've got a separate model for the task join. There it's defined, it defines its table name. And then what we can supply in this bit, and I wonder if I, there we go, yeah. That little bit, you define a um, function bit that you just go relation mappings, and then you say return an object, and your object, you can define dependence and dependencies that point to the model class here, so we're just linking it to that model. We're defining the nature of the relation, so has many relation comes from objection. Uh, and then on the join, we just say, go from the task ID and then go to this other field in this other table. So you just define the two table points there. And then you've got that available straight away. Uh, and you can also specify relationships through join tables. So this is a little bit more of a using that table to then link back to the tasks. So you then can know, okay, I want to go from the task ID, I want to find all of its uh, dependent tasks. Uh, so we go from this and then we go through a, another table and we define in the through table task joins a dependency ID to a dependent ID and then back to a task ID. And then we just do the inverse for the other type of relationship. Uh, and my example just to talk you through this is um, doing the dishes. Uh, so say for example, I'm using this to manage my life and right now I've got four tasks, I've got to do the dishes, I've got to buy some dishwashing soap, buy a dishcloth and buy a good yellow, little yellow sponge with the rough green stuff on the top. And those are my tasks and I realise that I, it's not just a you know, simple list, I've actually got to link some of the relationships between these things. So I realize that what I want to do is I want to basically link the do the dishes to buying the dishwashing soap, buy the dishcloth, buy a good yellow sponge, and then I can then do the dishes. Anyway, so I have this table join, I've got the relationship. Um, I can then just quickly find out what tasks on that doing the dishes do I need to do or get at before I can do that. And so in this query, I can literally just go, I've got one of the task elements returned, just do related query, dependent tasks. It will walk through the chain, it will give me back the tasks. Um, and I do have a simple example if I just swap out. Let's have a look, here we go. Now do I go, which code? I go to GraphQL query, here we go. So just quickly punch this away uh, and there we go, boom. So, as you can see in this, I'll just make it a little bit bigger because I imagine it looks tiny. Uh, there we go. So I just ran that query and it's given me back the three things I need to do, my dishwashing soap, buy the dishcloth, buy yellow sponge. Um, so I've got that available straight away. Uh, back to the presentation. And then, uh, here we go. So then, eager loading. Eager loading, you, all you've got to do is this. You just go, um, give me my dependent tasks and give me my dependency tasks. If I want to just see the whole graph relationship between my tasks, I can again go to, here we are, this little bit, chop it in quickly through, boom, there we go. So what you can see here, uh, you've got three tasks in the very top tasks that it are its dependent tasks. And then the dependency tasks are just the ones in the other three. So you can see those two relationships defined there uh, straight away. And then if I now go on to, so look. So that's eager loading, um, lifecycle functions. So lifecycle functions, they're a way to trigger functions when a record is installed, updated, deleted, fetched, or validated. 
um, and they follow a pattern of before the action, after the action. Um, so these are the ones that exist uh, and you can use them and just to show you how they're used. Um, so in this case, I actually get it to set some timestamps with JavaScript dates, uh, before insert and before update, just apply those values to those fields and then I can set that. The really cool example I wanted to do but I didn't get time was actually to have a little web app showing some tasks and in the model do something which would like say update a task in here, you know, send a message onto some queue like in Redis that then gets read by something that's actually connected to the WebSockets so that sends a WebSocket back up to the web app that then updates the UI. You, you have all this potential to like use these in really interesting different ways. Um, so that's another option you've got there with using these sort of lifecycle functions. Um, and then validations. Uh, so objection allows you to add validation logic to your models using JSON schema. Uh, and the validation logic uh, will raise errors, which can then be intercepted with try catch. So here's a good example from one of our internal projects at Starcount. Um, so basically here you say the schema is, it's an object uh, for a particular model. It requires a particular field called the batch ID. Um, you then define what properties exist, uh, what their types are, what formats they need, if they're read only or not. Uh, and then that is used when you're trying to create any kind of records or update records uh, to then perform validation logic for you. And it's JSON schema. So this is actually a standard that's out there. Um, and if you add JSON schema to your models, you get to do some really cool plugins later on. Uh, so one example I'm gonna show you um, that isn't to do with JSON schema, but is cool is graph inserts. Graph inserts are cool. Just to show you what I mean. My example is again, managing my life, making a nice meal. So um, I will quickly, actually no, I don't, I can code with my hand, that's fine. Um, so here I've got an example, make a nice meal. I've got two dependent tasks on that, making that nice meal. Decide what to eat, get recipe, and buy the ingredients. And technically, that's free. Okay, we're just going to link it to one. Um, and then let's make the recipe with the ingredients. So we've got these two dependent tasks that I need to do before I can have a nice meal. But anyway, so quick demo. I'm just going to switch out of this, and I'm going to go back to where are you? Graph insert. Here we go. So I've got this code nice and ready. Do I need to make it bigger? There we go. Just grab that. And we're going to slot it right in here. I'll just get that clear. Boom. That's actually run. And if I now go back to this database here, what you will see is it has created those three tasks and it's done the, uh, the task joins for me. These are new. They're, these are all here. So I didn't have to try and worry about the insertion order of all those things. I could literally just go, here's a graph, work out the dependencies, just insert everything, and then it just goes and populates it. And that's quite nice. That just saves a little bit of time and thinking. And then if we go to, go back here, plugins. So there are two really cool plugins um, that are worth checking out. One of them is uh, Objection GraphQL, and the other one is Objection Password. So Objection Password quickly adds local authentication to your application using bcrypt to apply the um, salting and the hashing. Um, setting up is really simple. Just make sure you've got a password field in your uh, database table. Uh, specify the number of hashing rounds for encrypting the password. And then make your user model an extended class of the password class. So to give you an example here, um, so you've got this class user extends password model. So rather than just extending model straight away, what you want to do is pass model into password. Password is required from objection password there at the top. Just specify a number of rounds that you want to put in. Um, the, more, the more rounds you put in, the more longer it will take to salt and hash, but in theory, the more secure it is. Um, so here's an example of just doing like an insert. You've got a username, email, a password. Um, when it then gets you know, inserted, the password's just salted and hashed, hashed there. And then when you want to do any querying back to sort of doing your authentication, you can just literally do it like this. And it's really nice and simple. Um, and that's just like authentication, just handled at least that bit. There is many aspects of authentication, but this is like at least that bit taken care of. Um, and then the second plugin that I'm really, really enjoying uh, is Objection GraphQL. 
So Objection GraphQL allows you to put a GraphQL API on top of your Objection.js models with a few lines of code. Um, and you will need to have your models using JSON schema in order to get the benefits of this. Um, so to show you what I mean, I'm gonna to go to a quick little demo. Um, again, another project at StarCount that we did um, was actually, I'll show you the project quickly because it's cool. Um, where's the web page? Here we are. Was this, no, not that, this. So this is a customer dashboard. Um, we built this for CEOs of uh, companies to basically work out what's going on in their business from a very top down sales, customers, customer segmentations, key performance indicators that they use to evaluate their mainly retail businesses. Um, and we basically have this like storing loads of data and objections used in this case. And as you click on update, it will do stuff or not. There we go, boom. So it's a nice way for them to filter. Um, in terms of the code repo, um, there's all these models here. There's about 21 models, I think, off the top of my head. Uh, there's lots of models, but the really interesting thing is I was running a little API for it, and then I thought, what if I could use GraphQL? It turns out you can. So uh, to use GraphQL schema, all you've got to do, say this is all your models, you've got to load GraphQL Builder here, then you require all your models, uh, there's a nice long list, and then you pass them in here. Now, the reason I do the field name and list field name here is because there's actually a pluralization bug in the uh, plugin at the moment. It just adds an extra S rather than doing proper pluralization. Um, but you can basically specify this and tell it, okay, these are the different um, models that I have. Uh, and then you go click build and we just export that schema here. And then to load it in, I literally just had uh, GraphQLs there, Express, uh, Express GraphQL, pass in the schema, pass in the GraphQL, boot up the app, um, load up the options here, just specify the endpoints, APIs up there, and straight away, I have basically uh, a GraphQL API with just the models. So it becomes really simple to then just start um, doing queries and like getting data and even just seeing what actual fields exist on all of the different schemas. And there's lots of schemas. Um, and that's really powerful. Like I literally, all I could do is write the models, write my business logic, put GraphQL on top and I've got an API. Um, so that's really cool. So that's why I really, really was sort of like, this is a really good library. Anyway, back to the presentation. Um, in terms of performance, because everyone asks about ORMs, they go, well, ORMs are usually put on a sort of payload legacy to um, being able to do the fetching and then instantiating all the objects in memory and all that. Um, do benchmark it and see what the benchmark uh, impact is like, because that is usually a good way to evaluate what the cost of using an ORM is for your um, various projects. <coughs> so to wrap up, um, we basically have Objection.js. We have Next. I'll just quickly go back if in case someone takes some notes. We have Next.js. We have Objection Password. Uh, and we also have Objection GraphQL. Uh, and one more thing, uh, happy to announce. Uh, now that's official. Uh, so after two and a half glorious years at StarCount, helping them to become a consumer insights consultancy from the Phoenix origins of a social media startup, uh, I'm going to launch my own consultancy uh, called Adphenix, and I'm available for contracting from mid-June. And that is it. Thank you very much.